So Five Nights at Freddy's as a whole is doing pretty well right now, and all the hype got me thinking about its humble beginnings. So in this video, I'm going to go over one thing I love about every FNAF game, from the original all the way to Security Breach with the Ruin DLC. Let's do this. Five Nights at Freddy's 1 is a masterpiece, and what I love most about it is its atmosphere. You're in this cramped, dimly lit room with this cupcake staring at you. Blood's yapping on the phone, and unfortunately his voice and the cupcake are your only source of companionship in this place. That fan is going constantly, and it's blaring loud as hell. Then on top of that, there are swirling, ghastly sounds that audibly tell my ears to get the hell out of here because it's haunted. There's children's drawings and art and crafts all over the place. And when looking through the cameras, it totally looks looks like it's nighttime at a standard Chuck E. Cheese kind of place that kids love. But then all of a sudden, you hear a weird noise like someone else is in the building. It's hard to tell if it's real or you're just mishearing things. There's some sort of rustling in the kitchen that's obnoxious and kind of startling, but too bad you can't get up to look because you're glued to this chair. Then you're checking your cams like normal when you hear something really off. And as soon as you say what the hell and check out what it is, you're a goner. Now you lay still in an animatronic suit with your eyeballs hanging out. You get my point. It really feels like I'm sitting in a haunted Chuck E. Cheese in the middle of the night. Now Five Nights at Freddy's 2 just took everything you were dealing with and more than doubles it. It's the scale of FNAF 2 that I love so much. Before you had those two doors, now you have two vents on the sides, and this hallway everyone looks at you through. There's more entrances for animatronics to get you. Then that marionette adds to all of this and is strictly tied to its music box, which means you now have to pull up the camera and wind that thing up to keep the marionette happy. Balloon Boy doesn't even kill you, he just holds up his little sign and turns off your flashlight. You're no longer really feeling alone in this one, because now there's this whole squad of characters characters ganged up trying to kill you. It really feels like a party. Then FNAF 3 came and flipped that on its head. We went from all those animatronics to mainly one, Springtrap. And the intimacy here is what I appreciate. The game involves only the player, the phone guy, Springtrap, and the hallucinations. Not only is Springtrap heavily emphasized as the villain since he's the only thing capable of killing you, but he's the smartest animatronic we have seen yet. He knows he's being watched and will stare down that camera. He'll be hard to spot on those cams too. And part of his nature is that there's an actual rotting corpse in the suit. When starting a night, there's a chance the player will encounter a close-up image of our antagonist with the body underneath the suit easy to see. So for allowing us to be up close and personal with the main face of evil of the franchise, FNAF 3 deserves some solid recognition. Up to this point, Springtrap was the scariest character until... Five Nights at Freddy's 4 threw trying to be realistic out of the window and dove right into making the animatronics as scary as possible. They all have sharp teeth and certainly deserve the title of being the nightmare animatronics. The atmosphere of this game adds to it as well, because we all have bedrooms and the overall location being a standard looking home makes it a bit more relatable than the pizzeria locations. Also, I just want to say that I love the plush trap minigame. It was really great for training the ears and testing my bravery. Sister Location went a totally different direction with the series, and I think a lot of what it did was good. The game had a lot more to it than just sitting in an office for six hours. You would go down the elevator every night, actually make your way through this weird underground world. Then a few minutes later, you would be eating popcorn in front of the television or playing a minigame. It was super neat. The specific thing I love here, though, is the voice acting. There were a lot more voices here than the previous games, and hearing animatronics talk was pretty cool. Ballora is here, in the room with us. Ballora will not return to her stage. Ballora will not return to her body. It made the characters that much more intimidating and interesting. Also, quick shout out to my boy Ennard. That guy is cool as hell. Very interesting character. But other than that, yeah, Sister Location was a solid installment, and the voice acting only made it more compelling. 
It's now the halfway point and we're looking at Pizzeria Simulator. I appreciate the actual build your own pizzeria part of it, but what I love is that the main gameplay is in that original format of you being stuck in a room with openings on each side, and that instead of surviving until time is up, you leave once all your tasks are done. So the tasks are on the computer and might be quick, like ordering cups, but others take way longer, such as unclogging toilets, which doesn't really make sense to do through the computer, but oh well. It's on your shoulders whether the night takes 12 minutes to complete or less, and that's a cool aspect of it. Ultimate Custom Night was a good one, and felt like an ultimate experience with the amount of animatronics available. But Mr. Hippo's story was insane. So here, after a jump scare, a voice line would be heard from the animatronic that got you. But with Mr. Hippo, it's a little different. My friend, you have met a terrible, terrible demise. But, uh, you know, I, I don't feel too bad about it. After all, if, if it weren't from me, it would have just been from someone else, you know? I guess what I'm trying to say is life, life goes on. Well, well from, for everyone else, life goes on. Not, not for you. You're, you're dead. But that's neither here nor there. It reminds me of one summer day in the park. So yeah, homie will just continue yapping and it's a wonderful oddity. FNAF VR is arguably the best installment in the whole franchise, and a big part of it is the remastering of the old games. The original, along with 2 and 3, are back in this great new immersive format. The animatronics are as tall as basketball players, which adds to the fear, and it's all graphically fantastic. A nice touch as well is seeing actual movement on the cameras. The original cameras had the animatronics appear only as still images, so seeing them more lifelike on the new cams helps achieve the greater immersion. There's also the FNAF 4 plush trap experience in VR, along with many brand new levels only available here. I'm never gonna forget the first time I was fixing up Bonnie and seeing the animatronics so close up like that, and then months later they added the Halloween DLC and it just made it even more fantastic. Glitch trap added to the immersion as well with him waving next to you on the side when you're trying to pick your next level. Basically FNAF VR has a lot of content and I think its inclusion of the first First three games was nice for the sake of remembering the franchise's past and for it including arguably the best versions of the original games. FNAF AR was a super unique installment and the animatronics are the star of the show. I mean, in what other game would you see a Statue of Liberty Chica or Freddy Frostbear? There are so many of these wacky characters that aren't present anywhere else in the franchise. Clown Spring Trap is definitely up there as one of the wildest ones, and yeah, it's really as simple as that. Security Breach is a big one, it's the embodiment of modern FNAF. The inclusion of brand new characters to the games is what makes it stand out. Vanessa, alongside her identity of Vanny, makes for a great new face in FNAF villainy. The Sun and Moon Daycare Attendant is a super cool character and likely the craziest one. Monty Gator effectively spices up the band, and I appreciate Roxanne Wolf's presence for the same reason. It goes without saying though that the star of the show is Glamrock Freddy for being your homie throughout the story. We've made it to our last edition, Security Breach Ruin, which has one of the coolest easter eggs of the whole franchise. Glamrock Bonnie's poor, lifeless corpse is found behind a curtain after deactivating the caution signs. What a tragedy. But anyways, that's all folks. Thank you for watching, and subscribe to honor the memory of Glamrock Bonnie.